Hello everyone and welcome to another MATLAB tutorial. This tutorial is an introduction to data pre-processing for machine learning using MATLAB. As always, Dr. Asim is providing us with a limited number of free coupons to enroll in the complete course on Udemy. I will include a link in the description of this video with instructions of how to get your free coupon. It's first come first serve, so make sure you redeem the coupon as quickly as possible. This course will also be added to the complete MATLAB course bundle on my website. If you find yourself needing one-on-one -on -one help with the material or one of your university classes, feel free to enroll. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello and welcome to the course of data pre-processing for machine learning using MATLAB. My name is Dr. Noman Azam and I would like to extend a huge and warm welcome into the very first tutorial in this course. This tutorial is designed to tell you a bit about the course and what to expect in the upcoming tutorials so that you are better prepared and you fully enjoy the journey and get the most out of this course. So let's have a look at what this course is all about. Machine learning is very broad and becoming an expert in this field can be quite challenging. A key issue that is frequently being faced by experts is how to modify and prepare the data before applying machine learning algorithms on your data. Because if you don't prepare your data well, then even with the best machine learning algorithms, you may not be able to get effective results. In this course, we will learn about data pre-processing techniques that will enable you to modify the data in order to build more effective, meaningful, and powerful machine learning models. In this course, our main focus will be on key data pre-processing techniques, including handling missing data values, detecting outliers, dealing with categorical data, performing feature scaling, and finally, this data discretization. For each pre-processing task, we will cover from three to six different techniques. For those techniques which involve complicated mathematical derivations, we will provide intuitive illustrations that will enable you to grasp the key ideas, notions, and give you a reasonable insight into the underlying mechanics of the technique without digging deep into the compli complicated mathematical formulas and computations. In other words, it provides an understanding at the very philosophical or intuitive level. For each technique, we will provide its implementation in MATLAB on some sample datasets. All the code templates and datasets will be provided to you as part of the course material. MATLAB is one of the fundamental computer languages for engineers and scientists, and is also frequently used by top machine learning research groups worldwide. It has thousands of built-in functions and capabilities which makes the implementation easy and fun. On top of that, it has a very rich online community of contributors where you can get help almost instantly. Currently, we do not have a comprehensive course on MATLAB for data pre-processing and this course intends to fill this particular gap. One important question, who am I? I am Dr. Noman Azam and I have a PhD in machine learning with focus on topics including rough sets, game theory and decision making. Currently, I am working as assistant professor in computer science. I have over a decade of experience in MATLAB and machine learning. I am teaching online courses of MATLAB with over 10,000 students on different online learning platforms including Udemy, State Commerce and others. During my research, I have worked on many machine learning problems related to application areas of text processing, malware analysis, bioinformatics, recommender systems, and medical decision making. By taking this course, you will get and learn number one, commonly used data pre processing tasks that are essential for preparing your data well before applying machine learning algorithms. Implementation of three to six techniques in MATLAB for each data pre-processing task. How to decide which technique may work well on your particular data set. And finally, take away the code templates. Finally, I do not expect any prior knowledge of MATLAB. We will do all the stuff from the very, very scratch. This course will boost your machine learning skills and I am quite excited to have you in this course. I also plan to constantly aid material based on your feedback, so do not forget to provide useful feedback at the end of the course. 
I cannot wait to see you in the course and I'm quite excited about that. So see you in the course. Hello and welcome to the very first tutorial in the machine learning course. In this tutorial, uh, we will introduce you to the MATLAB software and some of its uh, very uh, basic functions. So uh, when you first open the MATLAB, you will encounter a graphical user interface like this. Here there are several components of this graphical user interface, so let us look at them one by one. So this main portion which has the significant portion which covers the significant portion of this graphical user interface is called command window. This is where you can write your own commands and run your scripts as well. Here this is called the workspace. So any variables that we are going to manipulate in our scripts and in our code, they are going to be over here and you can view the current variables here in the workspace. This portion, it is called the current folder and it contains the location, the directly location of the folder which contains our scripts that we want to currently run and execute on the MATLAB software. Of course, there are so many other options and explaining each and every one of them will take significant amount of time. So we ra rather do not explain all of them and we only explain the ones that are very much relevant to us. And the ones which we will be using in our course, we will explain it as and when they appear within the course material. For now, the most important thing that we want to mention is this option which creates a new script. So whenever we are going to write a code, we are going to select this option and then we are going to write some code over here. Right? For example, we can say x equals to rand5 and then we will uh, run this code by clicking this button which is the run button and then we can see all the results on this command window. So whenever we execute certain code all the results are going to appear over here. So anything that we want to manipulate in the MATLAB software ultimately it is going to be stored in some sort of a variable. So what's a variable? A variable is a container which is able to store some kind of data for us. So let us explain some of the very basic variables. So when we write a equals to 5, this means now that the variable a will store the value of 5. And as we execute this, you may notice that the workspace contains now the variable a. Remember we talked about this workspace, it contains all the variables that are being currently manipulated within our, within our code. Alternatively, when we write whose it is going to display also all the variables and their respective data type. In this case the double data type means that it is a numerical value. So this A contains numerical value. Of course there are other data types as well and we will explain as and when they appear within our code. Alternatively we can also execute the very same code by going into our uh, our editor and write a equals to 5. So when we run this code it has it will ask us for uh, saving this file first so let us say we save it and when it executes it performs the same as as it performed on the command window. There is however one important point that you should note and that is that whenever we put a semicolon at the end of a particular statement then it's not going to appear on the command window and when we remove this semicolon then it's going to appear on the command window. One of the essential philosophy of MATLAB is to manipulate each and everything in terms of matrices. So each and every variable that we want to manipulate on the MATLAB software, it is going to be represented in terms of a matrix. For instance, when we write A equals to 5, so it shows that the size of this A, which it, it treats as a matrix, is of size 1 cross 1. Alternatively, if we want to have uh, multiple items within A, right, so we can use the square brackets and inside the square brackets we can insert individual items and now the A is of size 
1 cross 2. So it means that A is a matrix of size 1 cross 2. And if we want to access the individual element of this A, so we can say 1 comma 1 within the smooth braces and then it is going to return the first element for us. If we want to access the second element of the same matrix, we can say 1 comma 2 and so on. Now, alternatively, A can be a multidimensional matrix. Now, in this case, the size of A is 2 comma 2. And in order to represent the second row, it is separated from the first row based on the semicolon. Now, A has a size of 2 cross 2, and we can access the individual elements of this A again by using the smooth brackets. And we can, uh, we can access the second element, that is, uh, sorry, the uh, second row first column element, that is 5, by writing A2, 1, and we can access that particular element. Another beauty of MATLAB is that it contains thousands of built-in functions. And the philosophy behind those built-in functions it's, is to abstract away complicated operations and the MATLAB does those complicated operations on your behalf and then it returns the results to you. We will see many different machine learning built-in functions in the upcoming lectures. But for now, let us concentrate on some of the very basic functions that we will be needing in the upcoming lectures. So one of those built-in functions is called the min function. So whenever you are going to pass to it a certain variable such as a, it is going to return the minimum value corresponding to all the columns. So the matrix A, when we pass to it to this minimum function, it is going to return the column-wise minimum value. Similarly, there is a max function which is going to return the column-wise maximum value. And if we want to return the minimum of all the matrix, so we can call this function twice, and then it is going to return the minimum value across all the matrix. Similarly, there is another function that is called size. And this size returns two pieces of information to us. And those two pieces of information are the rows and columns. So this contains now the rows and this contains the columns of this particular matrix A. We also have a function for computing the mean and whenever you pass to it a certain matrix A, it is going to return the column-wise mean corresponding to that particular matrix. Again, there is another very useful function that is called the length. And whenever you pass to it a certain matrix, it is going to return the dimensions which has the highest length. Of course, there are thousands of other built-in functions, but we are not going to discuss all of them. We are going to discuss only those that are relevant to us in order to study the machine learning aspect on the MATLAB software. I think that's it for it. This will give you a boost and this will give you a quick start in order to apply MATLAB in our upcoming lectures. So more interesting stuff is coming our way. Do come back to cover that. And until then, enjoy machine learning. Hello and welcome again with a new lecture in the data pre-processing course. In this lecture, we will be looking at the first step in data pre-processing and that is how to import the data set into the MATLAB environment. So let's directly go into the MATLAB environment. I have dedicated a separate folder for all the course related material and I will be adding stuff to it as we progress in this course. You will get this folder along with the course resource material so that you can play and practice with the code and data. The data that we will be using in this particular lecture is stored in the subfolder with the name of introduction. The name of the data set that we will be using in this lecture is data underscore one dot CSV. This data contains the opinion of the buyers of a certain product from a business which has branches in different geographical areas. In particular, we have the data regarding the buyer's location, their edges, annual salary and whether or not they like the product. Now let us look at the key issue that is importing this data into the MATLAB environment. There are essentially two ways for importing the data into the MATLAB. 
The first way is without writing any line of code and using the MATLAB tool called import data tool. You will find this under the home tab over here. When you click it, it will ask for the directory location, the directory location of the file containing the data. So we need to browse to the exact location where data is located. In this case, it is in the folder data pre-processing for machine learning using MATLAB and then in the subfolder introduction. So when we select it and open it, you will notice a new window displaying the contents of the data. Now here we have some observations. First, the MATLAB is going to recognize the data in each column automatically based on the contents of the data in each column. So you will notice that the first column is recognized as text and the second and third columns are being considered as numbers while the last column is being recognized as text again. The second observation is regarding the names of the variables. So by default, the MATLAB is going to treat the first row values as the variable names, provided there are textual data within that row. If there is no textual data and all the data in the first row is numeric, then in that particular case, the MATLAB will assign the default names to the columns which are var1, var2, var3, and so on. Finally, if some of the data in the first row is numeric and some of it is non-numeric, then in that particular case, the non, the numeric data will be given the default names of var1, var2, and so on. And the non-numeric data will be given the name as date of the numeric value present at the specified location. So in summary, there are three possible options in this case. You may also notice that there are some cells which have a different color compared to the other cells. Such cells represent the data which is missing. There can be several reasons for missing data such as missed information or the equipment which was used for gathering data may have improper function or many other reasons. We will see that later on how to deal with missing data in this section. For now we just note that the cells with different color compared to the other cells containing missing information and when we move our cursor to these locations a text containing the NAN will appear over there. The NAN or NAN is interpreted as not a number in MATLAB and it is re a replacement for missing values. Now let us come to the most important point that is how to transfer the data into the MATLAB environment so that we can perform operations over the data. For this purpose we need to go to this option which is import data. Here you may find several available options. In this course we will be using the option of table. This is because the machine learning models we will be building later on in this course requires this particular data type. A key and essential advantage of table data type is that it can hold different types of data such as numerics and textual data. When you select the uh, table, make sure that the first row which contains the variable names are not selected. If you select that, it will also be treated as part of the data, which will lead to incorrect results. So make sure that the first row is not selected. Finally, you need to click on the import selection button and it will import all the data into the MATLAB environment. You may notice a variable in the workspace right with the type table this variable will have the same name as the file from which we have extracted our data the table will contain all the data and you can access the individual rows and columns of this table variable so you can view the contents of the table by writing the name of the variable containing our data that is in this case data and it will display all the contents of the table Finally, you may notice that the missing values in the data are being assigned the value of NAN, which means that these values are not numbers and were missing in the original data. So now let us look at the second method for importing the data into the MATLAB environment. So let's go straight into the MATLAB. 
right? So we need to console the command window for this purpose. And we need to use the read table function for this purpose. Please note that the functions are very commonly used in MATLAB. And there are thousands of built-in functions that the MATLAB provides for performing different tasks and operation. So the function we will be using in this case is the read table function. This function will take the location of the data set as an input and this it will return the data set to us as, uh, as an output in the variable data. So we may note that there is now a variable in the command window with the name data. This variable contains our data set. We can have a look at this variable by writing the name of its variable. There, right? That is the data in the command window. So this will display the contents of the variable data. We may note that the variable contains the same data as we imported with the import data tool. So these were the two methods and I personally prefer the second method. You may use either as both the methods are equivalent. In the next few lectures, we will be covering more exciting stuff on the data preprocessing, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome again with the new lecture in the data preprocessing course. In the last lecture, we learned how to import the data set into the MATLAB environment. There we made an observation that there may be cases where the data may contain some missing values. So in this series of lectures, we are going a step ahead and we will be learning how to deal with missing values within the data. Please note that we will be using the file in the subdirectory of handling missing data which contains all the data and codes that we will be using in the upcoming lectures. The very basic although may not be necessarily useful technique is to remove the entire row or column containing the missing values. We will discuss the pros and cons of this in the later part of the lecture, but for now let us learn how to delete a row or column containing the missing values. So this will make our first attempt or our first approach how to deal with the missing values. Okay, so we need to use the built-in function called rmmissing for this purpose. The function is abbreviated as remove missing. This function needs the data as an input and it will return the data with no missing values as an output. In this case, the output will be stored in the variable complete underscore data, which do not contain the missing values. When we do not specify any additional argument, then by default, this function is going to delete all the rows containing the missing values. So let's execute this code and see the results in the command window by typing complete underscore data to make sure that the two rows containing the missing values are now being deleted. So we can have a look at the original data and then at the complete underscore data. Let us now learn how to delete the columns with missing values. It is very simple. All we need to do is to specify an additional argument to the function rmmissing that is using the same syntax for the function but with an additional second argument with a value of 2. This will delete the columns with at least one missing value. We can have a look at the output of the function in the command window by typing complete underscore data to confirm that the columns with missing data have now been deleted. Okay, one important point is that whenever we apply certain operation on the data and modify the contents of the data, then we should make sure that we update our data appropriately. In this case, the updated data is in the variable complete underscore data. So we need to write data equals to complete underscore data to make sure that everything has been properly updated. You may have noticed in the previous examples that by the RM missing is going to delete the entire row or entire column if there is only one missing value. So a refinement over this basic idea is to consider the relative percentage of missing values. This means 
that we will delete a row or column if the missing rate is above some percentage of the entire row or column in whichever it happens to be. Let's learn how we can do it in MATLAB. I have created another data set for this lecture for this purpose that is called data underscore two. This is in the same directly location as the data underscore one dot CSV and is in the folder of handling missing data. Let's import this file into the MATLAB. We need to specify data underscore two here for this purpose. Let's have a look at this data. You may notice that there are some rows now with more than one missing value. And also there are some columns with more than one missing values. Coming back to our issue, that is how we can incorporate the relative percentage of missing while dealing with the missing values. The function we need to use for this purpose is the variant of the rm missing function with an additional argument known as min num missing. With this argument we need to specify the uh, minimum number of missing values that needs to be there in a row for it to be deleted. In this case we set it to 2. Let us see the output of running this code. You may notice that the row containing two missing values is now being deleted. By using different options of the min, min num missing, we can control the relative number of missing values which needs to be missing in order to delete a certain row. We can therefore make our own calculations and then fix and use appropriate values for the min num missing. For instance, if there are six features and we want to delete a row, if 50% of the feature values are absent, then we may set it to a value of 3. If we are interested in applying the very same procedure on the columns, then we need to specify an additional argument for that, and the syntax for that is the same with an additional argument of 2. You may notice that two columns are now being deleted if we execute this code. So if we set the min num missing to 3, then in that case none of the columns will be deleted. And we can verify this in the command window by writing restricted underscore missing. This is because none of the columns has 3 or more missing values. Finally, we need to update our data by writing data equals to restricted missing. In the beginning of the lecture, I pointed out that we will uh, talk about the pros and cons of handling missing data by deleting the rows and columns. Of course, this is the very basic strategy, so please note the following tips in this regards that may be helpful. Number one, if our data happens to be very large, that is containing thousands of records or rows, and the missing rate is not very significant. For instance, there are 10 thousands of instances and missing rate is only 0.5, which means 50 records. So we can delete them as it may not affect the final result a great deal. Deleting the columns should be generally avoided and should be only considered when the number of features are many. Some examples where the number of features are too many are found in text categorization and email classification problems where the individual words within the document are being treated as features. Generally speaking, a feature or column may be considered for deletion if more than 50% of its data is missing. Deleting the entire rows or columns is a very basic type of strategy for handling missing data which can be quite costly and dangerous as the data set may contain very important information in those deleted rows or columns and may lose that information. So we need to come up with a more appropriate and better idea. In the upcoming tutorial we are going to cover more interesting and exciting methods for dealing with missing data. Do come back to cover that and until then, enjoy data pre-processing. 
Hello and welcome to a new tutorial in the course. In this lecture we will be looking at two commonly used techniques for handling missing data and that is to use the mean and mode. So in particular we will use the mean and mode that are computed across the columns containing the missing data and use that value in place of missing data. This means that for instance for the missing value of age we are going to calculate the mean of all the ages for different people and use that value in place of the missing value. Similarly for the missing value of salary we are going to compute the average or mode salary mode of the salary that is the most frequently occurring salary and use that value in place of the missing value. Let us now learn how we can do it in MATLAB. We will first tackle the missing value in the age variable using the mean operation and we are going to use the data underscore 2 in this particular lecture. So let's read that into the MATLAB environment. Okay, we need to use the built-in function called mean for this purpose. This function needs the data for which we want to compute the mean. In this case, this, uh, the data is in the variable age. Please note that we can access the individual variables of the table which contains our data of interest, in this case by using the dot notation. So this means that we can access age data or variable by writing data.age. Secondly, we need to specify to MATLAB that this contains missing data and therefore omit the missing data while computing the average. This is being specified by the second argument omit nan. And we are all done. This will compute the average which will be stored in the variable m underscore age. Next we need to fill or replace the missing value with this particular average age value. For that we need to use another built-in function called fill missing. This function needs the data which we are interested to fill in. In this case we want to fill in the missing data in the age variable. The second argument specifies that we want to fill it with a constant and the third argument specifies that we are filling it with a constant average age value which we have computed earlier using the mean function. Please note that we may try other options as well such as previous and forward instead of the constant which will fill the missing value by considering the previous row or next row values. Those options that is the previous and next are used in applications where the data is collected with respect to some time frame such as time series data. For now let us keep things simple and use average instead by specifying the option of constant. So this function will fill in the missing value with the mean and will return the age data with no missing value in the variable u underscore age. We can have a look at the u underscore age and verify that it does not contain any missing values. Please note that the data we have in the variable data is not being updated yet. Rather, we have updated age information in the variable u underscore age. To properly update our data, we need one more statement and that is data dot age equals to u underscore age. Okay, great. Now let's have a look at our data in the command window by writing data. You may notice that we do not have any missing value under the variable age. We can repeat the same for the variable annual salary and get rid of the missing values over there. All we will be needing to do is to copy and paste this code and change the variable name to annual salary. Okay, let's now look at another interesting scenario where we may encounter a non-numeric variable having missing value. I have created another data set for this purpose with the name data underscore tree. Let us import this data set and have a look at it in the command window. 
you may notice that one of the non-numeric variable that is opinion has a missing value. We also observe that in contrast to numeric values where the value of nan is assigned to missing value an empty string is assigned to value when a textual data is missing. Now we are in a quite interesting situation as we cannot take the mean of the non-numeric values. Yes, we can apply the deletion option, but that may not be very feasible in this case, since we have very few instances. So a reasonable approach in this case would be to find the most frequently occurring value and use that value in place of the missing value. So let's see how we can do that in MATLAB. The first step in finding the most frequently occurring value is to convert the variable which contains the missing value and then convert it into categorical type. This is because the function we are going to use works on categorical data type. Next, we need to find out the most frequently occurring value. The mode built-in function will be used for this purpose so we need to write mod and then within the brackets we need to write data dot opinion and then we store it in the variable freq underscore opinion next we need to replace the missing value with the most frequently occurring opinion that is in this case it is not liked so can you guess what function we need to use next Yes, that is right. We need to use the fill missing function. Remember, we used it in the last lecture, so we need to use it again here. So we need to write opinion equals to fill missing and then data dot opinion. And we need to use a constant. And then the third argument is the constant value by which we want to replace the missing values. So in this case, we want to use the freq opinion which contains the most frequently occurring opinion value but we need to make sure that we need to uh, uh, use the appropriate the appropriate data type so in order to convert it into the appropriate type so that it becomes compatible with the built-in function we need to use cell str this will convert it into the appropriate string data type Okay, now let us look at the variable opinion in the command window. As you may have noticed that there is no missing values now. Okay, finally, can you guess what is the last step? Yes, the last step is to update our data. So since the data is not being updated yet, so we need to write data.opinion equals to the variable opinion. And now we are all done. We can have a look at the updated data in the command window. Okay, we can use the mode in the very similar way for handling the numerical data. So let's do a quick example on that also. We first need to find out the most occurring value by using the function mode and then we need to pass to it the data.h and then we need to return it into the variable freq underscore h. Let's see what is the most frequently occurring value in the data. You may have noticed that it returns this value which occurs two times in the data set. Please note that whenever there is a tie, by tie we mean that more than two, the two or more values happens to be the mode of a particular data so then the mode function is going to return the least value for the mode. Next, we need to fill in the missing value with the most frequently occurring value. We need to use the function fill missing for this purpose. So we need to write fill missing and then data.h and then we need to use a constant and the constant in this case is frac underscore age. And we need to store it in some variable say ages. We can now run and see the output in the command window and we may notice now that the missing value is now being replaced by the mod value. Lastly, we need to update our data by writing data.h equals to ages. 
We can do the same for the variable annual salary. All we need to do is to copy and paste this code twice and use the appropriate variable names. Please note that the mode can be used with the discretized numerical data. For continuous data, this might not be very useful since in case of continuous, it is rare for the data to contain repeated values. Okay, that was it for this particular segment. In the upcoming tutorials, we are going to cover more strategies for handling missing data. Do come back to cover that and until then, enjoy data pre-processing. In this tutorial, uh, we will be covering another method for uh, handling the missing values and pretty much exciting material to cover, so let's get started. The approach or the strategy that we are going to explore in this particular lecture for handling the missing value is by adding a separate value or in case of categorical variables, a separate category that is not present within our data set values. So we are going to select that value and then using that value we are going to replace all the missing instances by that particular value. So let's see how we can do this in MATLAB. So as always, the first step is to load the data set. And we are going to work with data underscore four in this particular lecture. So let's load this data set and see the data in the command window. Okay, so you may note that there is one missing value here under the variable location and another missing value here under the variable age. So let's handle these missing values. We are going to first handle the missing value in the age variable and later on we will be handling the missing value in the categorical variable that is location. Okay, so so as a first method, we are going to see how we can handle the missing value by adding a separate value in a numerical variable. We know that the numerical variable in our case, which contains the missing value is data.age. Now, an important question is how we can select another value instead of the missing value. For that, we need to consult the command window and inspect different values that happens to be within our variable. So let's go to the command window and see how we can do that. The function unique can be very useful in this regards as it lists out all the values that happens to be within our variable. In this case, these are the unique values that happens to be within our variable age. So now we need to select a value that happens to be outside of these normal values. So a good value can be a value of zero or a value that is not very much there within our data set. So we can always select some other value or we, you can replace it uh, by a value that is not there. So for instance, we can use 60 that is also not there. So a value of zero makes more sense since it is missing. So that's why we are going to replace the missing value that happens to be within this variable age by a value of zero. So let's see how we can do this. This is going to be very, very easy in MATLAB. So first we need to define a constant value that we want to use instead of the missing value. Let's say we assume it to be zero. And then we need to use the fill missing function. And we are filling the variable age, the missing values in the variable age. And the method that we are going to use is a constant. So that means we are going to use a constant value wherever we find a missing value within variable age. And then finally, we need to define the constant value that we want to use instead of the missing value. And in this case, it is stored in the variable constant underscore age, constant underscore values, sorry. And then we need to assign it into a variable age. And then finally, we need to say data.age equals to age in order to update our variable age. So let's run this code and see the corresponding output in the command window. Now you may have noticed that the missing value which happens to be here is being replaced by a value of zero. Now let us look at another possibility that is 
the missing value happens to be in a categorical variable. In that case, the categorical variable is location and the missing value is the second last value. So let's see how we can do this in MATLAB. So let's copy and paste it over here. And let's call this method as 5.2. And here we are dealing with a categorical variable. Right, so all we need to do is to make very few changes in this particular code. And the change that we are going to do is here, we call it now location variable. And we are filling the value in the location variable. And we are again using a constant value. And in this case, the constant value can be anything, and we specify it as other. And then finally, we need to update our variable location. And we are done. So let's run this code and see the corresponding output again in MATLAB. So you may notice now that the uh, variable location contains another value that is other instead of the variable uh, variable here location that was it for this particular segment of course you can always check the unique values in the location variable before assigning uh, before assigning a special value to the missing values in the variable but since its name suggests that location so other cannot be a possibility of values in this location so that's why I skipped the step of checking for unique values within this variable location and of course you can always get rid of this right because we do not have it here and we can assign it directly over here by just writing the uh, value that we want to assign to the missing values in the age variable so that was it for this particular segment. It was very straightforward technique and very easy to implement. Uh, we will rather see how it works in the later part. That is, we are going to compare different techniques that we have studied for the missing values and see the corresponding results, how they compare comparatively to each other in the uh, data science problems. So that was it for this particular segment. I hope you are enjoying the data pre-processing course. See you in the next segment. Hello and welcome to a new lecture in the data pre-processing course. In the last lecture, we have seen how we can deal with the missing values based on the mean and mode operators. And now in this lecture, we are going a step ahead and we are going to learn another technique uh, based on the very same notions of mean and mode. The data set that, we'll be, that we will be using in this particular lecture is data underscore four. And here, we, if we note that there is one missing value under the location column and one missing value under the age column. And in the last lecture, we have learned how we can populate this value is by taking the mean of all the values that corresponds to this age variable. Now the technique that we want to introduce in this particular lecture is to not take the mean of the entire rows, rather take the mean of the rows which corresponds to its corresponding category. For instance, this missing value is under the category of opinion equals to not liked. So instead of looking at all the values co corresponding to all the categories, we are just looking at the category not liked and then take the mean of that and then populate this value based on the mean value of not liked. Similarly, in order to deal with the categorical variable, missing value in the categorical variable, we are going to use the mode operation and we are going to use that mode operation based on the category in which the missing value happens. So we will be looking at what is the most occurring value for location within this category that is not liked and then we are going to populate that value. So the category based handling of missing value may provide more accurate results in situations where you have data science problems that are supervised in nature or in other words they have their corresponding class labels associated with it. 
So in data science, we have two kind of problems. One is known as supervised and the other one is non-supervised or unsupervised. So in supervised problems, we have the class labels associated with each and every row. So in that case, this technique may be more useful. So let's see how we can do this in MATLAB. So let us open an empty script, right? And let us first import this data set into the MATLAB environment. So this will import the data set into the MATLAB. So let's have a look at the data. So there are two missing values, one under the column of age and the other one under the column of location. So let's first explore the method of how to do it with respect to mean operator. So the very first thing that we need to do is to look at the opinion variable and look at its values wherever it is exactly equals to equals to not liked. So we are interested in these particular values of the opinion variable where its values is exactly equals to not liked. So when we put these uh, double equality sign so this will create a logical uh, a logical values. So those logical values will be equal to one whenever the value of this variable opinion is exactly equals to not liked. And we can always store it in some variable. So now this means that class one will have the same size as date of rows in the data. And for each row, it will have a value of either one or zero. It will have a value of 1 whenever the opinion is equivalent to not liked and it will have a value of 0 whenever the opinion is not equals to not, not equals to not liked. And in order to complete this operation, this opinion variable has to be converted into categorical form. So we need to say categorical data dot opinion equals to not liked. So let us execute this code and see the corresponding output so we can say class 1 now this class 1 has a logical array and whenever the value of uh, opinion is equivalent to not liked it has a value of 1 for that row and whenever it has a value of uh, its value is not equals to not liked so it has a logical value of 0 so that is the very first step that is we have uh, we have computed all the corresponding rows where the opinion is equivalent to not liked and we are doing it because the missing value happens to be in the category not liked. So in other words if the missing value is uh, going to happen in the category of liked then we will be considering the liked value here. So this means in conclusion that if we have missing values in multiple classes, we have to do it for all the classes individually. Okay, so can you guess the second step? Yes, that is to take the mean now of all the values of ages that happens to be within this class. So we need to say data dot age and we are considering only those edge values which happens to be in uh, in the class not liked so we can access all those rows by writing class one over here and furthermore we need to pass to it one more additional argument to this function and that is omit nan because it contains a missing value and now we are going to assign it into a new variable and that is will be class one underscore underscore mean age so that is the mean age that happens to be within the class one. So once we have computed the mean value across the uh, category of not liked, the final step is to fill the missing values. So we are interested in filling the missing value of the variable age and we are filling it for class one. So this means that fill the values of age that happens to be in class 1 and in this case we are filling it with a constant value and that constant value is in variable class 1 underscore mean underscore age and then we should update our data and then we need to say data dot age and we are miss filling it for class 1 so we need to update the class 1 ages 
so now we are all set and we are done so let's execute this code and see the output by writing data so now you may have noticed that this value which corresponds to Asia and 52,000 Asia and 52,000 has been filled up with the mean value of age within this particular category that is not liked so now let us see how we can do the very same operation using the mode operator so let's come back again to the code so we will first comment this code out and now we are using the mode based operator in order to perform the very same function in other words what we are doing is that we are going to compute the mode of all the edges that happens to be within this particular category and then we are using that frequently occurring value uh, in place of this missing value this is going to be very very easy in MATLAB all we need to do is to copy this code and paste it over here and then we are going to make only very few changes in this code in order to compute the mode best uh, the most mode best value in order in uh, in order to replace the missing value so we need to take rid of this and then we need to uncomment this code and we need to make one more change and that is we need to change the mean to mode and we are all set to go so let's run this code and see the output now in this case so now in this case the missing value that happens to be in the row asia 52000 so asia 52000 so now instead of the mean value for this particular category which in previous case was 39 now when we compute the mode it happens to be a value of 40 and we can always double check that by looking at the data so this 40 appearing twice in this particular category so that's why it is the corresponding mode for the category not liked so now finally we want to take rid of the missing value in the variable location and since this is categorical in nature so that's why the natural way to do it is to use the mode operator so we cannot take the mean of categorical variables so let's see how we can do this in MATLAB now this is going to be very very easy that is super easy all we need to do is to copy and paste this code over here in this part and now we are going to make very few changes here in this code first of all we are going to compute the mode of the location so we make change here and we are considering the location variable so we make another change here and then we are also going to change it into categorical form because the mode operator or the mode function in MATLAB it operates on categorical data right so we are also going to make another change here and that is now we are updating the variable location instead of age and here we also make another change and then finally we also need to make a change here and as another note we also need to change this into string form because the fill missing function it cannot operate with a categorical type of data so that's why we change it into string and then we need to enclose it in brackets so this will complete our job now it will change this variable that is in categorical form into its appropriate form so that it is recognized by this function fill missing so please note that this l is capital let's run and execute this code and let us see the corresponding output so now in this case we may note that the second last value which is against 55 and 83,000 has now the mode of all the values that happens to be within this category that is not liked so we may visually see that the value of Asia that appears one two and three times within this category not liked so that's why it has been considered as the mode and the missing value has been replaced by that value which is Asia and we have already taken rid of the missing value here in the age variable 
So that concludes our discussion and our lecture on handling missing values based on specific classes. So we have seen how we can use the class mean in order to uh, take rid of the missing value. And in case of numeric value, we can also use the mode if its values are discretized. And we can also use the mode operator for a specific class if its values happens to be categorical in nature. So those were the additional three methods. And with this, we conclude today's lecture. And in the upcoming tutorials, we are going to cover more interesting stuff regarding data pre-processing. Do come back to cover that. And until then, enjoy data pre-processing. Welcome back to the course of data pre-processing. In this segment, we are going to use random values for handling the missing values. So let's directly start that. As a first step, we are going to load the data set. So let's do that. And run this code to see how the data looks like. So you may notice now that under the variable location and the variable age, there are some missing values. In particular, under the variable location, we have three missing values. And under the variable age, we have two missing values, age position number three and location number six. So location three and six contains the missing values. In case of location, we have location or index three, index four, five, and index nine containing missing values. So let's first see how we can handle the missing values in the numerical variable. And later on, we will be looking at how to handle the missing values in the location variable using the random approach. That is, we are going to use some random values in order to populate these values. Okay. So we call this method as method 6.1 and the name of the method is using random values and we are first looking at the case where we are going to use random values for numerical data. So the very first point that we should note is that there is no built-in function that will do the job for us. So this means that we need to, row, to write the code manually in this particular case. So the approach that we are going to use is that we are going to consider the minimum value in this variable age. And then again, we are going to consider the maximum value within this variable age. And then we are going to define a random value that is between those two extreme cases, that is the minimum and the maximum value. So we are going to uh, define a random value that is within the range of minimum and maximum age values. So that is going to be our approach. So let's see how it can be done in MATLAB. So in order to get the maximum value of the variable age, we can use the max function and let us store it in some variable so we call it age underscore max similarly we can grab the minimum value with the function min and let's call it the minimum value age underscore min contains now the minimum value and age underscore max contains the maximum age value Next, we would like to grade the indexes of all the missing values that happens to be within the variable data, uh, data underscore data dot age. So this can be done with the help of the is missing function. Now, if we run this code and inspect what does I mean, so we will be in a better position to understand. So now i is a logical array and it contains zeros in all those locations or indexes which does not contain a missing value. And it contains a logical one in all those locations or indexes which contains a missing value. And we can confirm that from the data over here. That is the index 3 contains a missing value and as a result it contains a logical one. And similarly the index that is at location number six contains a missing value. So that there is also a one at location number six. So now our job is fairly easy. All we need to do is to look for the indexes i and whenever i is equals to one, we are going to assign random values to the age variable at that particular locations. So we need to run a for loop 
from 1 to the length of i so again this length is a built-in function which will return 10 in this particular case because there are 10 values in the variable i and we can confirm that from command window that it contains 10 rows so it is going to return a value of 10 so this means now that we are going to run this code 10 times that's what the meaning of the for loop is okay next we are going to check at each iteration that whether the value is equals to 1 that is we are checking for whether we are having a missing value at that particular index or not so for in order to check that we need to use another programming construct and that is called the if statement and finally what we are going to do is that we are going to assign random values to date particular locations at the variable age so we need to say age i and then we need to define a random value which will be assigned to these particular locations within the variable age So now we need to assign random values within the maximum and minimum value that happens to be within the variable age. So for that we need to use the built-in function randi. So what does the randi function do is that whenever we pass to it some constant value, let us suppose 5, so it is going to generate a value between 1 and 5, a random value. Again you can run it and you it is always going to give you different values within the range of 1 to 5. We need to scale this function to the appropriate ranges uh, that happens to be within our variable age. That is we want a random value between the minimum and maximum value. So let's do that. So we need to use the rand i function. So can you tell me what it's going to return? Well, in this case, our maximum age happens to be 55. So when we write rand i and age underscore max, so it is going to return a value between 1 and 55. So we want the minimum value to be not 1. That is, we want the minimum value to be age underscore min. So we are going to add that to it. Now, in this case, can you tell me what it's going to return? Well, it is going to return a value that is between minimum age and the minimum age plus the maximum age, right? So the minimum age happens to be 25. So it's going to return the values between 25 and the age underscore max plus age underscore main that is equals to 55 plus 25, 80. So it is going to return a value between 25 and 80. And we do not want that. So we are going to subtract again the age underscore min from here and now the range is being appropriately defined. Now it is going to return a value that is between 25 and age underscore max minus age underscore min that is going to be 55 minus 25 which happens to be 30 but since we are adding 25 to it so it's automatically adjusting its corresponding uh, its corresponding range and the range is now being defined between 25 and 55 right finally we need to add two more statements and that is and so whenever we are going to use the if statement in matlab it is going to be followed by an and statement Similarly for whenever we are going to use the for statement, so it is going to be followed by an end statement which specifies its corresponding scope. That is this for loop is from this line to this line. Similarly this if statement starts here and ends up here. That's it and let's run this code to see the corresponding output in the command window. Let's consult our data and you may have noticed now that the index number 3 and index number 6 contains uh, which initially contains the missing value has now been populated with some random values between the minimum and maximum age. And let's rerun this code and see whether we get different values from 34 and 42 because they are being randomly assigned. So in this case now you may have noticed that we get a value of 54 and 54 instead of the previous values which were 34 and 42. 
So whenever we are going to rerun this code, we are going to get different values for this, uh, for the missing values that happens to be within our variable age. Now, finally, I'm going to re-explain this again because some of you might be coming from non-computer science background. So the for loop, it is going to, uh, we use this in programming languages whenever we want to rerun a code multiple times. In this case, we are running this code 10 times because the length of i is 10. So from one to 10, it means 10 iterations of this particular code. Then this particular code that is if statements, we are using it in programming languages whenever we are trying to uh, look for a certain condition within our code. In this case, we are looking for the condition that whenever we are having the variable i, uh, the value of variable i at a certain index equals to one, so we are checking that. And we are checking that because we want to see whether there is a missing value or not. And if we are having a missing value at that particular location, in this case, i will be equals to either 3 or equals to either 6. So in both of these cases, we are trying to assign a random value to this particular location of the variable age. So that was the uh, meaning of this for loop and the if statement for those of you who are not very familiar with the programming language concepts. Now finally, we are going to look at another method and that is going to handle the missing values using random value in categorical data. So the approach that we are going to use is that we are going to select one of these values that is either US, Asia or Africa and we are going to randomly pick one of these values in order to populate these missing values. So let's see how we can do this in MATLAB. Again, you may notice that there is no built-in function for this particular purpose. Uh, so that means that we are going to use our own manual, manually written code. And since the code was a bit complicated, so I am going to convert that into a function. So your job will be to call that function with an appropriate inputs and outputs. The function name is function random value for categorical and all it needs is the variable which contains the missing values and as an output we can expect a new variable. So now it is going to fill up those locations which contains the missing values, those indexes which contains the missing values with some randomly picked value from the unique values that happens to be within this particular variable. So let's run this code and see the corresponding output. Now here we need to write new underscore variable which contains the variable without missing values. And you may have noticed that the three values that happens to be missing at location number four, five, and nine has now been assigned values. Four, five, and nine has now been assigned missing uh, randomly selected values from the existing values of the variable location. And if we rerun this code again, you may notice different values for this particular location. And we may double check that by rerunning it again. So in this case, the missing values are Africa, US and Asia. And if we rerun this and check it again, you may notice different values, US, Asia and Africa now, location four, five and location nine. Now they contain different values compared to the previously selected values. And as a final step, we need to update our variable location. So we need to say data.location equals to new variable. And this will complete our job. So let's run this code, go to the command window and inspect our data. And now you may notice that there is no missing value in the variable location. So those were the two techniques for handling the missing values using some randomly selected value from the existing values of the data. In the upcoming tutorials, we are going to cover more exciting stuff regarding data pre-processing. Do come back to cover that and until then, enjoy data pre-processing.